Perhaps the most impressive Twins win in the last couple years. We're going to break this one down on today's Lockdown Twins postcast. You are Locked On Twins postcast, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, your team every day. And welcome to another edition of our Lockdown Twins postcast. Today is Sunday, May 22nd. I'm the host of Lockdown Twins, Nash Walker. And my partner here yesterday called the Minnesota Twins special. They made him look really smart today. I love brownies. I'm sure you love brownies too, but you know what I love more? Brownie batter. Go to built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15. Built bars are delicious. Built bars are healthy. So, Brandon, Twins trailing 6 nothing in the eighth inning. I'm writing up this game recap. I'm getting our graphic ready to talk about a loss, maybe try to find some positives. And, and what happens next, sir? Well, I shut the game off, so I figured I would just do a little <laughs> box score checking, and it appears to – wow. They won, I guess. No, um, so we talked about it last night where, what was it, hitters five through nine came up big. Well, guess what today? So three hits from Arise, two from Polanco, two from Kepler, including the clutch double late. That is, if my math is correct, seven hits from your top three batters. And only five from the rest of the team. So again, the depth of this offense coming through. Gilberto Celestino with a great plate appearance. Even um, Luis Arise going down on strikes. Great plate appearance in terms of his discipline and just, you know, a, a shoddy strike zone. But some really, really, really um, clutch plate appearances that we might look back on as that's when this guy clicked. And Celestino, I mean, whew, that was impressive. Yeah, one of the best takes you'll see there from Celestino, two-strike slider from, you know, Scott Barlow, who's got one of the best sliders in the league out of the bullpen. And I think back-to-back, -back, Celestino Gordon allowed the lineup to flip over into the ninth. Luis Arise gets hosed on a couple called strikes in the eighth with the bases loaded and two outs, twins trailing by a run. But that was big, Brandon, because then it flipped it. We got Jorge Polanco leading off the next inning, and you got Josh Stamon into that game early. Yeah, and I mean... It Two, they had uh they used and deployed Carlos Correa well as as well in the late innings. So I think that I mean I, I guess I don't want to change the subject too, but Trevor McGill deserves some credit too for coming in and putting out a fire. Janir Cano did not have a very good day. But I mean, you just you can't lump enough superlatives on how this team handled adversity today. Uh not only getting down six zero, but that shaky strike zone, but seven runs in the final two innings. I mean I don't know how much more you can overstate how well they played this game and this series. And the boys are going to be back in town tomorrow against Detroit. So it's exciting. One of our main points with this team has been full team efforts. And it feels like during this stretch, just full team efforts, even in the, in the eighth, the bottom of the eighth, Tyler Duffy comes in, gets three quick outs to turn, then turn and get the offense back out there into the dugout and onto the field. And Jorge Polanco draws the, the walk to lead off the ninth. Gio Urshela pinch hits there. For Nick Gordon, I believe, and that was a decision at the time, maybe questionable with the platoon, but it worked out very, very well. Geo knocks in the game-winning run. Yeah, I mean, if you look at their slash lines, they're actually virtually identical after Urshela got that hit. I mean, Nick Gordon had a couple hits, that ringing triple too. You know, it's it's funny though. These are guys where, you know, with Urshela taking plate appearances and kind of swinging at everything, and you're like, man, when is he going to figure it out? Well, Jose Miranda last night, it came up with a big hit when everybody had kind of left him for dead. Now he's, he's still hitting a buck 17 right now. It doesn't mean that things have changed, but anytime that we are out on a guy, it seems like they come back, whether it's Tyler Duffy or as I infamously tweeted, um, Kyle garlic hitting against Barlow in the eighth inning, I thought was suboptimal. And then I got dunked on, uh, as I deserved. So I'll take the dunking when I deserve it. And I definitely did right there. It's a special win, and even in 2020, but more so 2019, we always think about the 101-win team and wins like this in 2019, games they had no business even being in in the eighth inning, and they find a way to win it. Twins are now 25-17. and 17. You're kind of banking that loss halfway through the day. I mean, how important is that, Brandon, to get this sweep, and now you move forward and come back home to Target Field with that momentum? I think they're 25 and 16, if I'm not Oh, 25 mistaken. and 16. You're yeah. right. I was counting the loss. 99 the win loss. pace. We can't let you off the hook there. <laughs> um, man, I mean, it's, again, you just, you cannot say enough about how this team responded. And it did not happen last year. 
You know, you're not getting 2019 vibes from the sense that they're pounding the baseball. Only one home run today. And 2020 was a weird season in pretty much every way you can imagine. Were the Twins good? Yeah. But it, it just never quite felt like they got their bearings. The offense wasn't great. The pitching staff was pretty good. And then last year, I mean, it wasn't the total system failure, but it was just not a good season to watch the Twins. So I think they're forging their own identity and in the process doing a pretty good job of showing the White Sox that they're here and they're going to fight to get their division crown back. Twins were underdogs today. Go to Bet Online. They're your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Go bet on the Vikes if you like the Vikes for next season. So I mentioned they're underdogs today, Brandon, because Carlos Correa is not in the lineup. Byron Buxton's not in the lineup. Bailey Ober's coming off the injured list, facing Brady Singer, who was very, very good. His last time out was very good again today. And still, they win this game despite all of those things. And there was before, and this, I mean, can still remain true, a feeling that this was maybe punted in this lineup. What was your feeling pregame about this lineup when it dropped? I always feel like when we are convinced a lineup is going to be non-competitive on a given day, they go out and win like 7-2. I mean, the seven runs was correct, but uh, giving up two was not. Uh, Singer was good. I mean, seven innings didn't really um, you know, blow guys away in terms of strikeouts and walks, three of each. But he looked like every bit the guy that you would have hoped to have drafted when Kansas City got him, I think, in 2018. So, yeah, uh, uncharacteristic for that bullpen to blow up as it did, too, which, you know, Barlow is absolutely devastating. 1.89 ERA. I'm looking at the screen right now. And they they had him pretty well riddled. So um, Taylor Clark didn't even get an out. I think he was I think he showed a graphic. He and Bailey Ober are buddies. But um, speaking of Ober, yeah, really nice job coming off the IL. I think we said, what, 75, 80 pitches last night and he threw 78. Um, just so many positives outside of Janir Cano having a struggle. And, you know, he might find himself back in St. Paul here very soon. But other than that, uh, lots of positives. Jorge Polanco getting on base four times. Uh, great plate nice appearances. Kepler. Everything. Yeah, Kepler, every, Kepler's double was huge. So twins sweep the rows this, this weekend, Brandon. Byron Buxton didn't have a hit by my count. Did not have a hit this weekend. 0 for 11. They still sweep the Royals. We'll go mm -hmm. back home now to play the Tigers for three and then the Royals again for four. A big part of this series, too. The Royals had a doubleheader with the White Sox. They played five games in four days, I believe it was. So twins took advantage of that in the back of their bullpen. Detroit now. Tarek Skubal sounds like he's going to pitch. I think he took a ball off the ankle the other day. Eduardo Rodriguez not going to pitch in this series. They're super banged up in the rotation. Bo Brisky going to go tomorrow Ooh. against Chris Archer. That is the probable matchup. Archer, Gray, Bundy in that order, if I'm not mistaken. What should we be looking for in this Tiger series, Brandon? Well, we're always looking for uh, Kyle Garlick to <laughs> be hitting like third against the lefty, which he will probably against Scoobal or maybe fourth or fifth, higher in the lineup than you would against a righty. But he made me look pretty dumb today. Uh, again, another team in transition. And, you know, as we saw with the Twins in the mid-20-teens, 20, uh, 20 that press, the process of getting back to good when you're bad it can ebb and flow up and down. That progress is not linear. I mean, we saw the Twins lose 103 or whatever games right after being um, a very, very good team. So I think both teams, the Royals and the Tigers, and then they'll, again, like you said, face the Royals again. They're going through those growing pains and trying to remember what it was like to win with a different cast of faces, not only on the field, but the manager and all the field staff. It's hard. And that's why I think tanking is so silly is because once you invite losing into your culture, it is so hard to get that out of your DNA. And I mean, we even saw it last year with the twins. So uh, both in transition and, you know, you hope the best Detroit's got some really fun talent, a couple former twins, but it's just not there right now. Twins. We were hoping 10 and five in this stretch, Brandon, this 15 game stretch of Royals tigers alternating They're three and zero to start. So seven and five in their last 12, and they will get to that 10 and five mark. That would put them at a 31 and 22 record, which I mean, that's, it's hard to ask for a better start than that and a better stretch White Sox Yankees are battling it out today. They'll be on Sunday night baseball. Twins could have a six game lead in this division by the end of the day. And they're controlling what they can control. So uh, amazing win, incredible win. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, that 31 and 22 gets you to pretty close to that old adage of you win 54, you lose 54. And then the other 54 decide how your season goes, whatever 54 that is for the twins. It's a pretty good or, or 53, whatever. Um, that's a good third of the season and that they can't take that from you, Even if you struggle, they can't take those wins from you. 
They stole one today. Yohan Duran was awesome to close. He is the weapon. Brandon, thank you so much. Like, subscribe, comment, Lockdown Sports Minnesota. I promise we do talk after losses. I was prepping to talk after a loss today. And yep. we do, but they just don't want to lose. They don't want to lose right now. Brandon, thank you, sir. And we'll talk again.